Hey guys, what's up? Good evening or morning. Um, so I'm talking about web development steps in 2017. So I said that this is a guide. Um, this is actually something that I just kind of brainstormed together with um, really laying out the exact the exact steps, not only that I took to become a web developer several years ago, which still applies to today, but um, also to kind of lay out in addition to some of these things that I've learned that I've kind of uh, jumped around about like I would say that I learned CSS and things like that, but th this is ultimately the exact order um, that I, I, I Learned most of the stuff when I was getting started and and had I you know had this guide I probably would have followed this step, you know th these steps um, You know verbatim one by one um, Because it still applies to 2017 um, just as much as it did back when I was getting started so First things first is, uh, this seems so simple, but a lot of people are like, where do I get started? So you're creating a website. The first thing you need to do is you need to have space on your computer in order to store your, your data. And your data is going to be HTML pages and it's going to be other stuff that we talk about in here. But just create a folder. And another thing too is that put some thought into it too because you're going to have a lot of different projects and you're going to end up being like, oh, I remember I was working on that music site and now I don't remember where I stored it on my computer. So you know, do yourself a favor and um, just find, you know, a particular project. You should have one folder on your, like, C drive on your computer, and then you should have all your projects under that or something. Um, that, that's what I would recommend. Just make sure you, you have some sort of standard for how you store your, your folders for your projects. So you need an editor, and I said uh, get Visual Studio Code. And this isn't a requirement. So I said if you have preferences other than Visual Studio Code, that's fine. But if you're just getting started web development and you don't have a text editor to actually write your code in, uh, I recommend Visual Studio Code because it's the best text editor I've seen in, in quite some time. In fact, it's more than just a text editor. It can be used for uh, integrated development environment type stuff as well. So stepping through your code. And that's stuff that, that um, you'll end up um, you know, needing as you get into really complex programming. You know, months down the road. So Visual Studio Code here is um, it's free for Windows and, and any other platform actually but you can install all these different little plugins that make your life easier so here's all these different programming languages like C Sharp and Python and Chrome, well Chrome is just a debugger for making web development easier but um, and then you have Go and, and C and C++ so the, the point is, is that you get all this uh, fancy styling, you get number lines and things like that because Technically, you can write code right in your notepad of Windows, but um, you'd probably want to kill yourself after doing that for like a couple days because it would be miserable. Um, so these text editors, they add styling and colors, and they can even inform you when you're typing something wrong and um, you know, even give you suggestions on what it is that you're trying to do. So that's the reason why you want an editor in 2017. So the next step is you want to learn HTML. So that is the, the starting, the founding block of any sort of web development, no matter what anybody may say. It, um, HTML is um, very, very relevant. You have to understand what it is. Um, it's not even a programming language, but it's a markup it's a, uh, syntax. But browsers read HTML, and they end up rendering things based off of HTML. So we use additional tools on top of that that we're going to talk about to manipulate how the browser uh, displays things. but ultimately a browser knows how to display HTML and there's no magic to it or anything like that. You learn HTML syntax you're gonna need it no matter where you are in, in web development it does not matter you absolutely have to have it. So I said in your project folder spend some time you know understanding how what an anchor tag is which is a link and how to link one of your HTML pages to another page so obviously store your HTML pages in the same folder that I said in step one of this uh, this guide. So I said, how do you learn HTML? Well, you can buy a book on it if you want. Some people are book learners. Some people like to go to websites uh, and learn, like um, or YouTube tutorials. I have YouTube tutorials on the subject. I have my hipstercode.com. There's a million other ones out there, um, and, and many that are probably much better than what I'm doing. So um, just you know, fi figure out what it is that you're comfortable with. Um, I also recommended the W3C website because um, they've been around for a long time, and for HTML. It's, it's rather basic in, as far as how the, the demonstrations are laid out, so uh, it's really, you know, it, it's sufficient enough in order to learn, in my opinion. So the next one, and this one's a little bit tough because people are going to try to skip and, and, and jump through this as quickly as possible, but you want to learn CSS. So I've talked about in previous videos that CSS is very, very relevant and that you need to understand it. 
Um, now, you don't have to be a master at it because a lot of cases you're going to end up using like templates and things that are out there for you. And you just need to know enough to, to be able to um, you know, change them to your liking and things like that. But then if you really want to um, be a, a cutting edge designer or um, you know, be able to take those themes or, or even create your own themes and things like that, you have to be a master at CSS. You have to know it very, very well. Um, so I said um, you know, spend quite a bit of time making those HTML pages and changing the colors, the layouts. Um, understand the differences between uh, inline and external style sheets and also make sure you understand the box model which is how uh, containers can be positioned using floats um, also margins paddings uh, which is all part of the box model but um, absolute versus relative positionings all those things are very very important in CSS and if you don't understand it you're gonna have hard times in any sort of web development that you do so the next step is to learn Photoshop. So I've been I've been using Adobe Photoshop since I got started. Um, now I'm not an expert in Photoshop because there there is like thousand page books that you can have in order to be like this great artist on Photoshop. But that is not really necessary for a web developer. But um, there are things that you need to do. Like um, oh you're like oh I need this to be on a transparent background or I I need to be able to resize this and and make it um, you know. So, uh, Save it, you know, for for web development purposes, so you don't have like a three meg image on your website, things like that. So it's really important. The Photoshop plays a big part in all my web development needs. Um, now there are free alternatives like GIMP, but they're not very good compared to Photoshop. Like Photoshop is the best and in industry standard by a long shot. Um, so I say you don't need a master Photoshop. So I've kind of already talked talked on that. You don't have to learn everything in that thousand page book, or even do some of the crazy stuff that that you do with. Um, different like layers and masks and stuff like that. You probably don't have to deal with a lot of that um, in just basic web development. So the next one is to learn JavaScript scripts. So I said um, spend time writing raw and vanilla JavaScript right into the HTML pages that you've been working on to this point. Um, so understand how JavaScript is being, being rendered. Um, as so I was saying, have it load time. So JavaScript has time so you can display an actual time right in the browser. Um, also, you can redirect using JavaScript and be able to move data around as well. So you, you need to um, have a lot of, I think, those founding principles to understand how JavaScript is looking at um, pieces of your HTML page. So this is a complicated step because um, learning JavaScript could literally take you anywhere from uh, you know one year to five to ten to be a true master of it. So. Uh, you don't need to, to be an absolute master, I don't think, in this step um, before moving on to the next one, especially if you try to keep things simple for your website. Um, but we'll, we'll talk about that more in just a moment. So after learning JavaScript, I was saying at that point you need to learn jQuery because jQuery is still around no matter what people say. jQuery made our lives easier, and modern-day JavaScript is making our lives more difficult. So jQuery still does a lot of the things that you needed to do very, very easy. Um, so you don't need to use Angular and React in order to display some Ajax data from a web server. Like it's not necessary. You're doing your overkill at that point. But um, jQuery still makes your life easier for most little things and also some pretty complicated things as well. So I think you definitely should learn jQuery in 2017. Learn how to use jQuery to replace what it is that you did with your raw and vanilla JavaScript. And then maybe take it a little bit further to just learn some of the more popular features of jQuery, like hiding and showing of containers and things like that. So the next one is to learn a server-side language. So there's all kinds of options here. Server-side languages are going to be the language that is running on the server that ends up saying, hey, I need to go to a database, or hey, I need to display this page because they, they visited this URL and all that stuff. That's all done by a server-side language. So there's many different languages like C Sharp, Java, Python, PHP, Ruby, JavaScript, which uses Node, and a bunch more um, that you can choose from. I always use C Sharp or Python um, just day to day, but there's nothing wrong with Java, Ruby, or PHP. Um, and Node.js is also pretty damn awesome too. So um, pick one of those though, and some people choose Node just simply based on the fact that they can use JavaScript to interact with it. So um, you don't have to learn another language, and that can save your development time. So um, either way, though, you need to learn enough about the syntax in order to to be, before moving on to the next step. So once again, you don't have to be an expert programmer, and you shouldn't try to cram everything in in like a weekend or a week. 
And plain and simple, if somebody says that they learn a programming language in like a matter of a couple of days, then they're really just an idiot. And unfortunately, they don't know that they're an idiot, but they, they will end up. Um, you can't possibly learn how to master a programming language um, and, and understand the community well enough to be able to jump in and design some of the best projects that are in that community um, without years of experience in most cases. So don't try to cram it. Just take it one step at a time and, um, and know that you don't have to be a master at it. <clears throat> Sorry, I have a cold. Um, so learn SQL using an ORM. An ORM is an object relational mapper, so it's uh, known as an ORM. Uh, but raw SQL has been used since the 1970s or even beyond that, I don't know. But uh, being a SQL developer is very important if you want to be a SQL developer, so you're writing raw SQL. But it's an ugly-ass language that's been around for a long time. And object relational mappers make SQL much easier to deal with. So languages like C Sharp has entity framework, so you're writing SQL on entity framework instead of raw SQL. Python has um, a Django uh, object relational mapper for the Django framework if you're using that. Um, and then there's SQL Alchemy, which is used by a lot of other popular Python frameworks like Flask and things like that. But ultimately, you're writing SQL in a different way, in a, in a more user-friendly way. And really, that's all you need to do for a lot of full-stack web development. Um, and then by the time you need to raw some, uh, write some raw SQL, you can end up looking up and um, you know being able to, to help. But I wouldn't spend a ton of time trying to be a SQL master unless you really wanted to be a SQL developer. So... Um, yeah, definitely uh, learn enough about SQL, though, in order to be able to communicate with the database using whatever sort of server-side language that you chose. Now, the next step is then to learn a web framework. So the web framework is going to end up um, helping you build a website and all the code that's necessary for a website to work. So depending on whatever server-side language you chose, that's going to be the framework that you chose. So if you chose Node.js and you're going to use JavaScript, then you're going to use something like Express.js or Sales. Um, if you're using Python, um, then you're going to use Django or Flask. Um, the idea with the web framework, though, is to learn uh, enough to be able to use the framework in order to deliver the, all the HTML pages that you designed in the first steps and getting all that stuff to just intertwine together in order to have all your JavaScript, your CSS, and HTML running and all based off of a web framework uh, that is delivering that content. So there's going to be instructions in, in whatever sort of web framework that you choose but having all this prior knowledge leading up to that point is going to help you so much when it comes to understanding how to actually tie all that stuff together the next step is you want to buy a domain name a domain name is like youtube.com or uh, Chris Hawks or myhipstercode.com um, so you buy a domain name. I always go to GoDaddy for whatever reason. I just I find their user interface very easy to buy their domain, and then all I I don't host with them. I just simply take their domain and point it to my web host. But um, using GoDaddy, it's just easier for me. But there's also like um, one in one, I believe, is another one. And I, I'm gonna throw some links in the description tab below so you can actually check those out for um, you know links that I recommend for companies that actually sell domains. You can even buy hosting packages from them if you want, but um, my personal host of, of choices in the next step, I said buy a web host so you can use one of those domain name companies to, to host your web application. Um, I use Linode for all my websites, but DigitalOcean is just as awesome. Some people might want to go to the cloud, um, like a more traditional cloud provider like Amazon AWS, but it's going to be more complicated and more expensive. Uh, and then Microsoft Azure as well would be a, a Microsoft option. Um, so I said this is a personal decision. It really depends on, you know, the, the type of project that you're trying to make. If it's just simply a website like that doesn't change very often or that you don't plan on getting a ton of traffic, then you probably just want to deal with a shared host like Web Faction. But if you plan on getting a couple hundred thousand views a month or uh, in a week or something like that, then you probably want a virtual private host and you would use something like Linode or DigitalOcean or, like I said, Am Amazon AWS or, or Azure. But that that's like an entirely separate video discussion I think on on the options there now I said um, once you have your web host install FTP tool like FileZilla a lot of people don't know about FileZilla but it makes um, transporting files from your computer to the web host much easier I think it's a user friendly format for me I find it easier some people will be like well you can just use git well you can but you're using a command line to do git commands and it's not it, to me it's not as clear I just like the, the, the actual user interface layout of FileZilla. I feel like I can reason about what's going on much easier. 
Um, because I can see in my folder in real time, oh yeah, I uploaded this file in the wrong folder. Shit, and that happens all the time, by the way. So deploy your code to the web host. Now this is going to be the nightmare um, where you end up, you know, depending on what type of setup you have. But this could take a, a while, um, you know, if you're using your own virtual private host and all this other stuff. But um, deploying all that code that you've written and all these steps leading up to this time um, to the web server, so that everything is then visible to the internet, you know, to anybody around the world that can finally see your code and everything. You know, this is when you finally have something to show on your resume to say, I own this website and I fully manage it and created it and I'm a full stack developer because that website obviously in most cases is going to have a database. It's going to have, um, you know, you have to set up like your, like I said, your host. So they're, they're, you're going to have to figure out, do you want to use Apache or Nginx or something like that? Um, but, it, you know, there's a lot involved in that final step. But once you get that done, there's a lot of satisfaction with knowing that you're a website developer and that you have something online that people can see to say hey I built that you know so uh, it's extremely important I think um, and um, all, all things considered I think that you can get websites and do all these steps in literally a matter of uh, you know weeks really but you know fully understanding it to the point where you feel like you can bake a website and do these steps over and over again in a day or something like that um, then you know, that I think takes years, it really does, but uh, we'll, we'll see, but I mean, there's definitely, um, the best way is by learning and doing, and, and this is honestly like the, the exact steps that I would follow today, and that um, in most cases I followed mostly, um, you know, back getting started, but a lot of it was, you know, just me learning the hard way, okay, I need to do this, I need to do that, and um, anyway, you're getting uh, straight from the horse's mouth, because I've been, I've been developing websites now since uh, 2009, so... Um, it's about seven years and uh, anyway let me know what you guys think make sure you subscribe vote up the video and share also this video is sponsored by dev mountain coding boot camp so they are my sponsor make sure you guys check them out the descriptions in the the the, uh, the well the link is in the description tab below so uh, check those guys out they have courses um, actual on on-site courses that are both 12 and 16 week courses which can be online um, and also can uh, be on on their actual location. They're based out of Provo, Utah, but they also have uh, locations in uh, both Dallas and Addison. And they're they're continuing to grow. They're adding new technologies, um, so they're actually focusing on the technologies of the here and now. So they're focusing on things like Node.js and Angular and React. Um, and and the point is is that they're trying to get enough information into you so you'll be able to land that first uh, full time gig to get more experience in, in you know, the industry itself. So definitely check out Dev Mountain. Um, they're one of the, the top rated coding boot camps available right now. So thanks for watching guys. You have a good day. Bye.